Today's a day about celebration. We're going into this new year, and, and it's just like, I just want to look back and celebrate things. So, but I really want to celebrate you guys, Island Community Church, and what you are to Nikki and I. For allowing just some punk who really honestly, I'm just going to be honest today, I have no clue what I'm doing, okay? I really don't. You're not really supposed to say that when you have a microphone and you're in front of like a couple hundred people, but I'm just being honest. I really don't, and I'm aware of that, and thankfully I'm aware of that in a way that I say, hey God, I need you to step up and show up and show off because I will mess this up royally. But I, I just, I really wanted to say thank you for allowing us to come here. And I say us because I want to brag on my wife for a minute. And she's going to be so mad at me after service today. But I'm going to do it as she just chuckled like, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> but we in our many, many years of ministry at this church and another church, we have always been a team uh, in ministry. We started in kids ministry and student ministry and did that for a long time. Uh, and she has amazing gifts and skills that I definitely do not have. And I have some gifts and abilities that she doesn't have. Basically, if it happens on this stage, that's pretty much my responsibility. Most everything else that you see that happens here, she has in one way, shape, or form a hand in it because she is so involved not because she feels like she has to, not because she's employed by Island Community Church, but because she and we love this church and we have invested our lives into this church. And I say all of that to say thank you for that opportunity. I wanted to start this year off just like, hey guys, thank you that you allow us to do what we absolutely love doing and that's being here worshiping our amazing God serving you guys leading people to Jesus that's what God has called us to do and that's what we want to do so thank you so much for allowing us to do that and again I am in trouble later that's all right I'll buy you lunch today honey So again, I do want to celebrate what God has done. Not necessarily what Island Community Church has accomplished, although it is you guys, but it's God working through us. It's God resourcing us. It's God giving us vision and direction uh, and just using us to reach out into this community, reach out into this world to fellowship with each other, to lift up each other, encourage each other. So um, I, I've got a bit of a slideshow that I want to go through. And guys, I've got the clicker, so uh, I'm going to do that. But i uh, got a whole bunch of pictures of random things that happened throughout the year. This by no means covers everything that happened this year. Um, but it's just a handful of pictures that I had, and I, I, I put a message out to a few people to say, hey, send me some pictures of some cool stuff that happened. You might see your picture in these. So, all right, so the first one here, this is our new logo, the Island Community Church logo. We're kind of in the process of rebranding, kind of making this new logo, taking us, us in a different direction. You're going to see things changing. You've seen this week the connection desk in the lobby was changed. You're going to see some different things here in the sanctuary, in the lobby, different ways that we do things, different ways we connect with people. We're all we're working on things like that in order to streamline how we can reach people. We never, ever, ever want to say, hey, we're just going to do the same thing just because we've always done that. That's a terrible reason to do things. So we're kind of rebranding. The next, look at those guys right there. Those are uh, two pigs that have been cooked. Uh, this was our pig roast. That's Shannon and Gary and myself. I think that maybe Brenda back there. Uh, this was a community-wide event that we did to just bring people, hey, listen, I'm not going to lie. We like to eat, okay? And we like to eat well. And we happen to cook well. So we might as well use our gifts, talents, and abilities to reach out into this community. And we had a ton of people here for the pig roast. That was blast. And how many, how many churches do you go to? Well, I guess maybe in the south. But do you go to and you see a couple of hogs right there roasted? 
Uh, this was cool. This was a uh, pastor's conference that Nikki and I got to go to in San Antonio. Just wanted to celebrate that. Anybody remember what that was? That was the first, first Wednesday. And of course we chose the picture. That's Tony up there speaking. And that's Tony and Colleen on the screen kissing. Isn't that weird? <laughs> okay. So this was our first Wednesday. This was the history of ICC. If you missed it, you missed it. This was awesome. And I mean, it went, obviously it went way back. I mean, this is a black and white picture. Like, I, just, I didn't even know they had pictures back then, Tony. <laughs> I know. As soon as it came out, I went, oh no, it's Colleen in there too. See how long it takes for me to ask him to preach again. Um, so he went through the entire history of Island Community Church. It was awesome. I think the video is on our Facebook page. You may be able to go uh, and view that. What else do we have here? Uh, this was all a bunch of our ladies that they went up to a ladies conference at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, that was really cool. You guys enjoyed that, didn't you, ladies? Okay. Now. That's a good-looking group of guys, isn't it? <laughs> all right, so uh, that's actually, these are all of our elders here at Island Community Church, and this next, one, this next one will say a little bit more. This is not church discipline, okay? Larry didn't do anything wrong, okay? I know it looks like that. We're laying hands on him, praying the sin out of him. No, uh, this is actually this year when we uh, brought Larry in as our newest elder. So we were laying hands on him, praying over him. That was really, really, really wanted to celebrate that. That's a cool picture. That's a win right there. Who recognizes that? What is that? Okay. I got to brag for a second. How many churches can sit at sunrise on the Atlantic Ocean like that and have a sunrise service? Come on. I mean... If you, if you missed that, you've got to catch this next one here. Our sunrise service and our Christmas Eve candlelight service, two favorite services of the year, but that's Pastor Tony up there preaching. That's, that's cool. Uh, this is our, what we call Island KX. That's our version of a Vacation Bible School. We don't call it Vacation Bible School because kids don't want to go to school in the summertime, so we call it KS, uh, KX, Island Kids Extreme. So a couple of pictures here. Us up on stage. Us teaching. And then, I don't know what's going on here. And then we have a foam party afterwards. How many churches say they have a foam party after? We thought that was cool to uh, follow up that week. That was a really cool week. Had a ton of kids out here for KX. That's coming up in June. Another shameless plug. We always need lots and lots of volunteers. See Nikki, our children's director. What's that? The Island Boat Show, it says it right there, guys. Okay, so this is the Island Boat Show, which is another shameless plug. Imagine that. Coming up in just a couple of weeks, we need lots of volunteers. You can see Dave Makepeace out in the lobby after service. Okay, cool. Now that I got that out of the way, this is our Island Boat Show. We have tons of vendors, boat dealers here. Uh, this is our main fundraiser for the year. It's not just because we like boats, although we do, but the reason why we do this is we raise a bunch of money for local scholarships and local and global missions and ministries. Last year was about $115,000 that we netted from the boat show. And so that is done by a handful of people that just, again, every year basically figure it out again. And so we need your help. Please, please, please go sign up to take one or a couple of ships for that weekend. It's just uh, coming up just a couple of weeks. And then here is a cool picture to celebrate. That's Tony and I over there on the right with the Coral Shores graduates that we were able to give to this year. We gave out over $50,000 of college scholarships this year. It was uh, Coral Shores graduates. We also give to Marathon, and we uh, continue on for college students uh, that can reapply. So that's awesome. How'd that guy make it in there? 
I don't know. Um, so that is Mike. Of course, you know Mike Alford. He is our assistant pastor. He has been here uh, almost six months. I think the end of this month will be six months, which remind me, we need to have a review or a talk or something one of these days. <laughs> He's doing all right. Just, just let the cat out of the bag there. Mike has been an amazing addition to our team and to this family. Uh, he and his family, they are just a, an awesome group. We're so blessed to have them here. Um, he, Mike just basically, I can throw pretty much anything at him, and I do. And he just, okay, okay. And he just goes and does it. So I'm very, very, I'm grateful for you, Mike. I'm not going to say I'm grateful for him. I am grateful for you. So that's a, that's a huge win right there. Uh, this is our student ministry, fuel student ministry. I don't know what's happening up there in the front, but it's a student ministry. Weird things happen, okay? This is some of our students going off to camp. Michael and Jessica led them to camp. Not sure what's up with Jocelyn's socks there, but I think I found Waldo. <laughs> and these are our students at camp. Uh, Sawyer's got some face tattoos going on there. Uh, their, their team was yellow, if you didn't figure that out, but they had a blast up there, and we're looking forward to that again this summer. What do we got next year? Come on. What do we do on Father's Day? We play Life Size Connect Four. So that is our players, not necessarily champions right there, but... Uh, <laughs> Let's just say he learned a little more about Connect Four after that, but we had a blast. Father's Day, we came up, we played Connect Four, and we did give a message too, in case you're like, do they actually preach in this church? We do. I'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, this was moving day. Can you imagine moving 40 plus years of being in this building to another building? Because remember, we had this building sold in like three days before closing. The buyer backed out, which was totally God's will. He's got an awesome plan. Better things are going to happen. Uh, but can you imagine moving 40 plus years from one building to another? It was kind of crazy. And, and we had been throwing stuff out for over a year. But a ton of you, this is just a fraction of the people that showed up. A ton of you guys showed up to help us load this poor U-Haul a bunch of times, move it all over and everything, get it situated. That was cool. That was a win. Um, yeah, so that happened too. That's a dinosaur and a unicorn. And if you ever wonder if your fearless children's director is not willing to do whatever it takes, that's her in the unicorn outfit there. But we had those there because we had dinosaur and unicorn races. And this was at our fall festival, uh, which we had a ton of kids show up uh, just in a way to love on them, get the, just give them some fun. As we get into fall, we had potato derby races. That was a huge hit. We had a maze and bounce house and food. And then we also, see, we, there's food usually revolving around most things that we do. Because we have these two champions right here. The Island Community Church Fall Festival 2023 potluck champions right there. That's uh, David and Glenn. That was pretty fun. And then here we have our biggest outreach ministry, uh, our local outreach ministry of the year. This is our Thanksgiving outreach. Uh, we pack uh, and deliver over 500 meals to uh, local people in our community who need meals, who otherwise probably wouldn't have a warm Thanksgiving meal. Um, and so many of you guys were involved in that, just distributing or coming help packing and setting up and all that. Um, Tony just took a bunch of extras and he was delivering them to people all throughout the week. He probably still has meals in the back of his truck. Okay, if you need a meal, he's, do you still have any, Tony? He says you still got it, told you, told you. Apparently it's pick on Tony day today, I don't know. So... Uh, and then here is one of our bags going to a family. It gets a personalized letter from me and an invite just to regular service. And then, of course, our Christmas Eve uh, services invite there. Uh, this is another humongous ministry that we do. This is Operation Christmas Child. Those are shoeboxes filled with toys, hygiene items, uh, different pens and pencils and school things. These get shipped out all around the world to underprivileged children who otherwise wouldn't receive anything for Christmas. Also in them, 
uh, they have the gospel and, and information and literature about Jesus. So we love doing that. This year, I think, was a record 539 boxes, I think, that you guys packed and we shipped off. So um, that was absolutely incredible. Uh, here's a bunch of you guys when we did our pencil pouch packing party. Yes, I got it out right. Uh, so those, were, those pencil pouches went into the shoe boxes. So that was awesome. Um, some of you guys recognize this picture? <laughs> that picture right there, if you know, you know. Okay? That was Fran Young getting probably the gift of the night, at least the most creative gift of the night. Thank you, Zach. Good job, Zach. Okay? Zach won, Zach won the overall prize for the night. That is a shirt with David Fair's picture on it. Okay? And Fran Young got it. Oddly enough, it got stolen from somebody at the White Elephant gift exchange party. Uh, sure. All right. It wasn't me. All right. And we had our kids sing uh, a few weeks ago. We, they sang some Christmas songs. That was really awesome. It was awesome to have them come and sing and to be blessed by their singing. But let me tell you a little inside secret on another reason why we do this. And we shamelessly do this. Because when you have a kid that's going to sing, what do you do? You invite grandparents, you invite neighbors, you invite friends, you can even invite your enemies to come here and watch the kids sing, right? And we shamelessly lure in, them in here, let them hear the kids, and then we give them some Jesus. So another reason why we do things like that. That was awesome. Kids did great. Okay, now, why are we showing just a random picture of a bathroom? Because these are some pictures of what Jake and Mika's house looked like before. I know you guys are probably having flashbacks, like they really want to bring us down to this place. Yeah, so this is what it looked like before. This was kind of this textured paneling. The roof, there, there was a leak that was kind of, ceiling was falling down on the porch there. The steps, uh, somebody, I won't mention who, but took a, a step a while back and went through the front step there, so that didn't go well. There are the new steps right there. Thank you, Don Darcy, for coming up, and a couple guys helped him on that. Uh, this was the countertops. There was burn marks. They were kind of yellow for mica and all that, and a big burn there. This is what the kitchen looked like before. We had pulled out all the appliances. We're replacing all the appliances, but... Just the old linoleum flooring and just kind of, eh, ew. And here's what it looks like now, minus some of the appliances, but that's the new cooktop, uh, treated countertops, new flooring in there, all new paint throughout, new blinds, uh, all new appliances, uh, light fixtures, ceiling fans, Front porch, we're going to do the back porch and a little area for them back there. Am I missing anything, guys? That's pretty much everything, most everything. So it looks much, it looks much better. Uh, he says, oh, yeah, which is either a testament to it looks really good now or ew. Okay, I'm not sure. So anyway, that's that. And here's how I want to finish. I won't say this is... Only why we do what we do, because we do what we do to give glory and honor to an amazing God who makes all of this stuff happen. But right here, these, this is one of the things I can put my finger on and go, yep, this is yet again another reason why we do what we do. Why are we standing in water? Well, this is one of the several baptisms that we had this year. There's another group. That whole group decided at one time to... Uh, to show that they love Jesus, that they, they are fully bought into Jesus by uh, demonstrating that through believer's baptism. There's a couple of you guys that I got to baptize, and then the group out there uh, again in the water. So again, that's it right there, church. We have a lot of fun. We eat a lot, apparently. It's pretty much revived. And that's Mike Wilkinson's fault for always bringing good food. Um, but... We reach out in the community, we help sell boats, we send money off to missions and, and, and missionaries do amazing things, but right here at Island Community Church, this is one of the biggest things that we do. We introduce people to Jesus, sometimes for the very first time, or sometimes reintroduce Jesus to people. 
and God just does something and changes their lives. That's bullseye, nail on the head stuff right there, church. And the reason that we can do that, what makes it possible, is that you guys show up, you are generous, and you help us run a church that is relevant, that honors and glorifies an amazing God, and that allows us to reach out into this community and out into this world and not be a little holy huddle and have the same number of just, you know, Christians, and we all speak Christianese, and we all do our Christian thing all the time. That's not what we're about. We want to reach people and say, hey, we have something amazing, and we want to tell you about it. That's why we do what we do, church. So thank you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for being a part of Island Community Church. And thank you for allowing God to do what only he can do. Because if it was just us trying to do something, fall flat on our faces. But you allow God to work in and through you and through this church. And I'm so, again, grateful to be just a very, very small part of that. So thank you, guys. Good work. Now, so again, you're probably going, yeah, it's almost time to get out of here, and you've not read the first verse yet. Because that's what I would be saying. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. So, quick message today, and this is the, the kind of the New Year message that I've been kind of holding on to for a while that I feel God's been speaking to me. So, the title for today is 2024, What's the Word? What's the Word? Now, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense, but it will here in just a couple minutes. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of New Year's resolutions because, I, I don't know about you, but what I do when I make a New Year's resolution, like, I have to do that thing every day. And if I miss a day, it's like catastrophe, and I get discouraged, and then I just, well, I don't have a perfect record, so I'm pretty much just going to stop doing it. Anybody else like that? Is, that? is that just me? I'm just like, so I, I kind of stopped doing New Year's resolutions. What I'm trying to do more of is to set goals for the new year because goals allow a little bit of leeway. Goals allow you to kind of, you know, mess up a little bit, but come back. You just, just try to keep focused on that goal. And that's kind of the picture that I want to paint to you guys today. Um, if I were to give you some space to be all alone, to just spend some time with God, to seek after God, to ask him, just to kind of, just to think and ask God, hey God, what's my thing? So I, I want to give us a little bit of space. I want to ask a handful of questions, and basically all of the questions mean the same exact thing. I'm trying to, to, to boil what God has for you and for me down into one word. So here's a series of questions that maybe will get your brain working in that direction. Direction. So the goal, again, just to let you know, the goal today is to find a word that God has for you this year. So here's my questions. What one word would best describe the action or direction that God wants you to take in 2024? If you could boil it down to one word, what would that one word be? And, and there's no magic in the fact that it's one word. It's just that it's so memorable and transportable and elevator speech. And it's just, it's right there. And I have my word. I'm going to share my word here in just a minute. But it's like, it, it's, it's right there in the forefront of your mind. That's why I'm just saying one word. Maybe it's a couple words. Maybe it's a phrase. It is what it is. So what one word would best describe the action or direction that God wants you to take in 2024? Or maybe I can ask it this way. What character trait does God want to strengthen in you in 2024? Here's another one. God wants me to have more or be more blank in 2024. Before you think too much about that, the answer is not money, okay? <laughs> don't, don't let that one be the answer, okay? God wants me to have more or be more blank in 2024. 
Here's another way to ask it. In what area do you need the most growth in 2024? What's the area in your life that you know that you need to grow the most? And last question, if I may, what sermon or message point has hit you the hardest recently? Maybe it's not even one of my sermons, and that's totally fine. Maybe it's in your devotion, just wherever it is. What is something that God has revealed to you through a message, through scripture reading, that just really hit you recently? That it's like, oh, that's, that's the thing. Now, it's kind of odd how it works out that we just went through the nine fruit of the Spirit right? Which are all one word things. And I'm not saying your one word has to be one of the fruit of the spirit. Mine is not, but it's just kind of coincidental, if you will. I think God kind of knew what he was doing because I didn't plan it this way. That we talked about those individual words and those fruit or those characteristics that God needs to develop in us. So you guys want to know my word? I'm going to be a little transparent with you today. Okay, and, and the reason is because I want to, I want you to fully understand what I mean. You, you, I don't know, this tracks with me. Maybe you're sitting there like, what word are you talking about? I don't know what the word is. So I want to share mine just to be transparent, just to show you how I think this will work in me. And when you get your word, how that will work in you in 2024. My word is intentional. I want to be more intentional in 2024. Again, just being honest, that's not my strong suit. Okay? I, I, God has gifted me in some areas. Intentionality is one that I have to work on. And so I want to be more intentional with God. I need to be more intentional with God. I need to be more intentional with my family. I need to be more intentional with people. That's you guys, with this church. I need to be more intentional with my responsibilities. I need to be more responsible or intentional with my time. You see how that works? You see how that one word can penetrate pretty much every area of my life. And if I were to just apply that one word to, to, to all of those areas of my life, it would be a game changer. So I'm not looking for, here's eight steps and things to do in 2024, or here's, you know, seven things that we need to, to, no, no, no. What is one word that God is impressing upon your heart that will basically change the direction? Because you don't, you're never going to remember eight things, but you can remember one word. And if you allow that to work in your life in every area, God will use that. In just one word, we get to 2025. And you've allowed God to just work in your life with that thing. Game changer. So what's your word? And I say all this, and I can step out on a limb and say, I wholeheartedly believe that God has a word for you. That, that God, is, I know several of you are probably already have your word. Like you, you already know because I know me and I know where I am deficient and I know where I need to work. And guess what? So do you. You know you and you know where you need to work. And so if we allowed God to step in and just work in that one area, not a whole bunch of things because if you have a whole bunch of targets and you shoot at them, you're going to be all over the place. But here's the thing, and I say this a lot, if you aim at nothing you will hit your target every time. Every single time. So let's pick one thing to work on. All right, you guys ready to open your Bible? Finally, like, oh my goodness, normally we're almost leaving by now. Genesis chapter 16. Genesis is really easy to find because you open your Bible to the first book, Genesis, and you're there, okay? Genesis chapter 16. Now, as you're turning there, you got your Bible, you got your phone, there's a Bible in front of you. If you choose not to, the words are going to be up on the screen. So in Genesis chapter 16, a really kind of interesting thing happens here. We have who we know as Abraham and Sarah. They were renamed Abraham and Sarah. At this time when we're reading in Genesis 16, they're Abram and Sarai. 
And so if you don't know, Abraham is the father of, of, the Israel, or of Israel or of the Jewish race. Okay, that's where it all started. And God came to him and said, hey, I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to make you a covenant. I'm going to build a nation through you, Abraham, or Abram at the time. And, and, and there's going to be so many that you won't be able to count them. You won't be able to. It's going to be like the stars in the sky or grains of sand. You're not going to be able to number them. And that was a great promise that God made to Abram. But there was just one problem with that. God's not really worried about problems. The problem is Abraham and Sarai, or Abram and Sarai, were um, well along in years, if I can just say it like that. They were pretty much past time where they were able to conceive and have children. And so this promise, this covenant that God made to them seemed a little bit far-fetched, but hey, God's done bigger things, right? And so God makes this promise, and then lo and behold, nothing happens immediately. Question, what do we do sometimes when we pray to God and we feel like God has, you know, heard us and then he doesn't do anything? What do we often do? What do we become impatient. We often take matters into our own hands, right? We often begin to doubt God. And that's what was happening in here. Like God visited Abram and made them a promise and they're starting to doubt. So chapter 16, verse 1, it says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. Now, some people say Hagar. Some people say Hagar. I'll probably call her both today. So, an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So, she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. This is Sarai. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Now, there's a lot going on here, right? Number one, they're forgetting about the promise of God. And we would never do this, but they think they have to help out God. Sarai's like, oh, well, maybe God's not going to do it this way. I have an idea, and maybe this is what God means. Probably not. So she says, hey, I've got this, this servant, Hagar. Take her and have children through her. So... What was Abram's response? I mean, Abram's a man of God. God spoke to him. Abram surely said, Sarai, thanks for the offer, but that's just, that's not what God wants. Is that what he did? Nope. Next line here. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. I mean, he's only a man, right? Verse 3. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. So when Sarai knew Hagar was pregnant, Sarai began to despise her. They, they had this strife in between them. Verse 5, Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. What? Sarai. Now, come on. You are not innocent here. Now, is Abram innocent in this? No. He participated too. But Sarai is now coming at him like going, this is all your fault. I won't say anything more than that. <laughs> Verse 6. Just moving along here. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. He took the easy way out, didn't he? Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord, now pause just for a second. When it says the angel of the Lord, when it's, when it's here, Lord is capitalized. You can see it in other places in scripture and things. Most scholars, myself included, believe this is actually God. Okay, this isn't just an angel like the angel Gabriel who came and, you know, spoke to people. He was the announcer that this 
I fully believe this was God and what we would call a Christophany, which is a, an appearance of Christ before Jesus was born as we know it, okay? So I believe fully that's what's happening. God himself was speaking to her. So verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. I love how scripture gives us these, what we may think of unnecessary details, but so many times in scripture, it actually verifies things that we can see today and, and scripture is backed up by archaeology and things like that. I love that. Verse eight, here's our key verse. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, and he asked her two questions. Here's our big two questions. Where have you come from and where are you going? Two massive questions the angel of the Lord asked Hagar. Where have you come from and where are you going? Now, if I were to ask you both of those questions, you may know the answer to the first question, but you may not know the answer to the second question. So if I asked you, where have you come from? Or here's another way to say it. What did 2023 have in store for you? Do you have an answer? You probably would, because you can look back. Now, you might say something like, man, 2023 was hard. That was a hard year. 2023 did not go as planned. 2023 beat the snot out of me. You might say that. 2023, maybe you would say, it's weird. It just kind of came and went. Like, I mean, I remember some things that happened, but it just happened so fast. Maybe you'd say, hopefully you'd say, 2023 was like the best year of my life. I hope that's the case. Um, I guess the follow-up question is, what made that happen? What happened in your life that made it so good? But if your year was not all rainbows and unicorns, which I'm guessing several of us in here, that would be the case, might I suggest that you would contemplate maybe just a change in direction of the things that you can change? If things didn't go as planned... And you can look back and go, yeah, I could have done that better. Yeah, that one was my fault. Maybe we should change directions a little bit. Maybe we should set some new goals and maybe focus just a little bit more. Now, I, I get it, though. Some things, some things just happen to us that are beyond our control. And, and, and those are times where it's just like, God, are you there and I just, I want to encourage you because I know as you look back at 2023, it may have been the hardest year of your life. You may have lost somebody. You may have received a diagnosis or a loved one has. I don't know what it is, but I want to encourage you. God is still good. We just sang how good he is. And God is good through those things. And I want to encourage you to not run from God when those things happen, but run to God. Because all he wants to do is wrap his loving arms around you and walk with you through those things. Not prevent them from happening, because if that's your idea of how God works, that's not the one true God. Because God does allow us to go through some things. But does he promise to hold us closely and walk with us as we go through those things? Absolutely, 100%. So where have you come from? And what did 2023 have in store for you? Here's our second question. Where are you going? Or what do you have in store for 2024? That's the vision thing. That's the goal thing. That's the one word thing. Like, like, do you have an answer? Like, do you know? Let me, let me ask you this. Do you know the answer to that question before about 10 minutes ago when I posed this whole thing to you? Or 
are we just like the eighth day into January and we're just doing the same thing we were doing nine days ago? Where are you going? What do you have in store for 2024? But I think here's, here's the trick to that. Would you and God have the same answer? If you said, here's, here's the goals, here's what I want for 2024, would that be what God has in store for you? Because I, I want you to have personal goals and I want you to have fitness goals and I want you to, you know, get better at something. I want you to have those things. But if we're going to boil all this down to one thing, is that the thing that God would have for you in 2024? Because I guarantee that when you line it up with what you want the most is what God wants the most, oh my goodness, look out. Because things will happen in this next year. I'm not saying everything is going to be rainbows and unicorns and everything's going to work out perfectly. But I'm saying 2024 is going to be like, whoa, God, I saw you work in my life this year. So what does God have in store for you in 2024? Or what does God want to, you to accomplish in 2024? And I know, I know I'm talking positive, I'm talking future, I'm talking goals. You may be in a place right now where you think it's just not going to get better. God doesn't have anything for me. God is everything but abandoned me already. I get how you might feel that way. If you had a rough 2023, I understand. But guess what? I bet Hagar felt the same way. She was basically chased out into the desert by herself, pregnant. You think she was pretty down in the dumps? You think she had no vision of what the future looked like? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably how she felt. Back to verse 8. And he said, this is the angel of the Lord, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she said. She answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. Now pause. It's very interesting. Where have we heard that before? With who? With Abram. Wait a minute. No, that's Abram's promise. Why is that Hagar's promise now? See, because God's going to do what he's going to do in spite of you. God made a promise... Abram and Sarai kind of messed that up, messed up God's pure, true plan. But God's going to keep to his promise. Verse 11. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. Now, this next verse here is probably not what you want to hear as a mom about your unborn child. Are you ready? Here we go. Verse 12. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. Now, let me shed a little bit of light on this. And I referenced this uh, a few weeks ago. Ishmael is known as the father of the Arab race. Light bulb. You see what has happened here. Abram and Sarai messed up God's plan. God had made a promise. Now, instead of one nation, the Jews, now we have two nations. And the angel of the Lord right here prophesies... They are going to battle with each other forever. Do we see that happening now? That's exactly what we see happening now. We think the conflict that's over there that's horrendous is something new. It's not. 
We see anti-Semitism. We, oh my goodness, it's new. No, now maybe it's more accepted than it was before. Maybe it's more open than it was before. But guess what? It's been around, well, since right here in Genesis chapter 16. That's where it all started. Why? Because Abram and Sarai did not wait patiently for the Lord. Verse 13. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. And the name of God for that is El Roy. L-R-O-I. El Roy. The God who who sees. Isn't it amazing, church, to know that we have a God that sees us? Like there's, what, 7 billion people on the planet, and he sees each and every one of us, and he's so infinitely wise that he knows the numbers of hairs on each of our heads. Some of us less than others, a little easier to count. I get it, okay? But it's really awesome to know, especially when you're down in the dumps and when you think that there's nobody there, that God sees you, just like he saw Hagar. Verse 14. That is why the well was called Be'er Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore, a son, uh, bore Abram a son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. God answers promises, always, always, always. So here's our three questions. Where have you come from? Or what did 2023 have in store for you? Where are you going? What do you have in store for 2024? And the most important question of them all, what does God have in store for you in 2024? What is that thing that God wants you to focus on because I promise you there is a thing there is one thing now there may be a lot of things but there is one most important thing that God wants you to focus on in this next year so the last few weeks we've been kind of ending with a prayer and I want to give you another one of those so here's our prayer God what do you have in store for me in 2024 and can you help me put it into one word so it's memorable, so it's understandable, so I can transport it into every area of my life. God, what do you have in store for me in 2024? Don't just live every single day like just trying to get through the day. Be intentional. If you want to steal my word, go for it. But we need to think ahead. God, what is it that you want for me? What do you want me to concentrate on? And will you help me just put it into one word or just at least a way that I could remember it and have it constantly in the forefront of my mind so that I can honor you in everything I do. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are the God who sees. Thank you, Lord, that you see us no matter what condition we're in, no matter how we've chosen to turn our backs on you, no matter what we've done, God, you always see us, and God, you are always there, and you are begging to allow us to allow you to just wrap your arms around us. Thank you, God, that you are like that father of the prodigal son, the wayward son, that you were standing there waiting for us to come back to you. So God, help us to keep our eyes focused on you. God, help us to not get wrapped up in just all of the daily junk in life. But God, help us to look forward, look to the future, ask you, God, what do you have in store for me in 2024? God, help me not to repeat the same stupid mistakes that I just continue to do. 
God, help me to make better choices. God, help me to surround myself with better people. God, help me to dig into your word. God, help me to seek you daily, constantly in prayer. God, help me to have the courage to share my faith with others around me. God, we need you in those things. So help us, God. Help us not to just aim at nothing, but help us to focus on you. And if you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. If that's you, if you've never made a decision for Jesus, if you've never given your life to him, right now in this moment, I want to give you the opportunity to have the greatest gift ever. The reason why we open up these doors. It's not just because we like meeting. It's not just because we like singing some songs. It's because we want to worship and serve an awesome God who served us, who sacrificed for us, who gave us his son, Jesus, hanging on a cross, taking our sin, taking our shame, and bearing it. Because with that sin, you and I cannot enter into eternity with him. So if that's you right now, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus right now in this moment, would you just say, Jesus, I give you my life. Be my savior. Save me. Change me. Here I am. Heads are still bowed, eyes are closed. You said that this morning for the first time. I would love to know. I'm not going to call you out, but I just want to pray for you and celebrate. Would you just slip your hand up and say, I got it right today. I gave my life to Jesus today for the very first time. Just slip your hand up. Thank you, Jesus, that you are so good, that you are worth following. Thank you that we can sit here and take so much time just with a handful of pictures and celebrate what you have done through us. Thank you for the opportunity to serve this church and to serve this community in the way that you give us. God, I pray for us as a church for 2024. That God, we would we would see you do things like never before. May 2024 be the best year yet. God, we lift up this time of offering. Help us to be generous, Lord. Help us to use it in a way that it honors and glorifies you. Help us to give with right hearts and right motives. And God, help us as leaders to use those resources in a way that honors and glorifies you and furthers your kingdom and does things that matter in 10,000 years. We thank you again, Lord, that you are good. You are so, so good. And we pray all this in your awesome, holy name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.